But what happened to the cameras? Well, thanks to people like Dickie Howitt, they're alive and well and living in Essex. Dickie, nice to meet you. When did your interest in television ephemera begin? Uh, I, when I was 11, funnily enough. I mean, I've got a photograph, actually, taken of me about 150 years ago, <laughs> um, of uh, an outside broadcast camera from, a, yeah, from ATV, and it was at South End on Sea. And uh, I t looked at this piece of apparatus and I thought, that's for me. So uh, it was at that early age you started collecting things, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, later, when I became a photographer up in, in London, I, mean, mm. was, I started out as sort of an office boy and then became a photographer. And I was quite interested in lenses. And I've got a lens here, which I actually, which has vanished. Oh, it's down here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this particular lens, actually, uh, I bought it off someone. He said, oh, it came from, uh, from Birmingham. And uh, it was an ATV company, and they did all the early lunchbox programs with Noel Gordon back in the 60s. Oh, so it's got a bit of history, and uh, I thought, well, that's nice. But unfortunately, I thought, well, what goes on the back of this? Where's the rest of it? A, a TV <laughs> camera. Let's have one of those. So then I started hunting yeah. for, um, for, uh, for television cameras. So from that humble one lens beginning, this happened. <laughs> this uh, did, didn't it? Yeah, I'm <laughs> it got a bit big, didn't it? Um, that's fantastic. What's this? Well, this is um, a Marconi camera from the 50s, uh, which I found on a rubbish skip. You restored all this yourself? Yeah, but if you know what you're looking for and what you're looking at, then you can bring things back to life. Um, simple things, restoration things. I mean, you might have a Q-dome. Right. But, of course, that's just a deodorant top, you see, and that <laughs> would fit on <laughs> somewhere like that. Um, well, you wouldn't know the difference. This is sort of the tricks of the trade. This basically. is your earliest camera, though, is it? Yes, this is about 1951, 52. Yeah. And this particular camera would have been used by the BBC to film the coronation in 53. Um, this was an outside broadcast camera. And what's this one over here? Can I ask about that? That's some lens, isn't it? What's it? Yeah, yeah, that's a telephoto lens. Um, you might recognise this from, um, from the grandstand opening sequence, oh, you yes. know, with the da 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 da, -da. Um, This particular camera was used um, on the first Top of the Pops in 1964, 1965, in Manchester. And um, this photograph, people like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, they'd actually sort of lint up against it. This is why I like this sort of stuff. It's something got, you've said, isn't it? You like, yeah. you like things that famous people have breathed on. Breathed on, touched, been there. This is part of the history of these things. I mean, there are people who, who are interested in the electronics of the, of, uh, aspect of it, but I'm interested in the sort of the social history of what these things were used for. As you can imagine, I wasn't the only person who took an interest in this particular collection. Our cameraman, David, took a long stroll down memory lane. The actual image device backwards and forwards. So it went backwards and forwards. Instead of moving the lens focusing in that, you move the... Yeah, yeah that's the whole true. And also, it's that's reverse scan, well, isn't that it? It is reverse scan. Well, the field scan and line scan, if you reverse those, you get upside down and back to front picture. Yeah. Just done with a flick of a switch. It was Doctor yeah. Who. You remember right. that? You yeah, know that course. Yeah. Then, if you pull that across, we'll take that out and we can check the gate, make sure everything's all right. And it, yeah, the gate is clean.